Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video that is long overdue. I had a comment put on one of my previous videos and the request that was put in was for some hints and tips and advice about how to make your makeup last longer. So it's somebody that struggles to make their makeup last the day and they're wondering if it's to do with the order that they put their makeup on in. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. It's going to be a really chatty video. Okay, so let's crack on with it. Um, when I was thinking about how to put together this video, I was thinking about what are the things, the typical things that actually make your makeup not last. Um, so make your makeup transfer or lift or move around on your face. You know that stage in the afternoon when you might have a little bit of a shine going and your makeup's not sitting quite how it did when you first put it on and you're thinking god this is not what I left the house looking like. It's all about skincare and how balanced your skin is. So when you're thinking about why is my makeup not lasting, it's probably other factors that are contributing to it, not just the makeup. It could be the quality of the makeup that I'm using, it could be the order I'm putting it on in, it could be the way I'm putting it on, but actually it could be just your skin. It could just be the fact that your skin is unbalanced in the first place, so if you tackle that and have that rebalanced, then it might actually just sort out all of your problems. I did a blog post a little while ago, which I will link in the description box below so you can flip back and read it. And it should be really, really helpful. It was all about the basics of skincare um, and why we should even bother with it. Is it all just a big media hype to get us to buy stuff, or is there actually um, real truth behind behind doing a cleanse and a tone and a moisturise on a regular basis. Basic steps we should be taking every single day just to keep our skin healthy. It's as simple as cleanse, tone, moisturise. Okay, and if you want to add any extra things into your week on top of that, then that's up to you. So for example, I use um, an eye cream, I use serums before my moisturiser, I use an SPF, I use primers and once or twice a week I exfoliate and I do a mask as well. So you can make your routine as simple or as complicated as you like but really if you are not doing a basic skincare routine um, you can't expect your skin to be balanced and the reason for that is is all to do with the science beha behind how your skin works okay so I, I feel like I'm about to launch into a repeat of my blog okay I'll just I'll just go into the basics just a, f a few little bits when you cleanse the skin you are removing all of the dirt, grease, grime and makeup that accumulates over time. Now my recommendation is, and a professional skin therapist recommendation is, that you double cleanse your skin twice a day. Why do you need to cleanse your skin in the morning when you've only just slept on it? Well, even if you don't wear makeup, even if you don't work um, or live in dirty climates or pollution zones or anything like that, your skin produces a mixture of sweat and oil. Um, you will sometimes hear oil referred to as sebum, that's a science fancy word for it. So your skin produces oil and sebum and when these two mix together they create an acidic pH and that is your skin's first line of defence to things like bacteria, fungus, viruses and all other nasty microorganisms that might actually land on the skin and try and penetrate and cause infection. When your skin produces sweat and sebum, it also, not only is it a good thing, but it also acts as like a glue. So as you travel through the day, things like, at the very least, dust um, and particles in the air, dirt particles in the air, are going to cling to your skin and collect. And things like that can actually block the pores and the hair follicles and cause infection or they can cause blocked pores and congestion and spots and things like that. If you are a person that wears makeup then you have even more reason to wash it off um, and if you use products like moisturiser and stuff you need to keep your skin on a regular cleansing turnover so that you are keeping the acid balance balanced. When you cleanse your skin 
you are removing the natural moisturiser, which is your sweat and sebum mix. That is also your natural moisturiser. So if you don't moisturise, your skin is then unbalanced and being left unbalanced. So you need to moisturise to replace the moisture that your skin has had washed off. If you don't do this, your skin is going to think, ah, I've got to produce oil and sweat really, really quickly because I'm feeling parched and I need to rebalance it very, very quickly. So what your skin does is it overworks in compensation and you will get an excessive greasy shine. And that in itself can actually lead to more congestion, more blocked pores, more reason for dirt and grease and grime to stick to your face. And if you then continue not to have a good skincare routine, you started one hell of a vicious cycle and your skin will continue to be unbalanced, continue to try and fix itself, but actually further unbalance itself in the process. Um, and I have done this before. I have also met people who don't cleanse and don't moisturise and they don't get spots and they don't see the point in anything that I'm saying. And I just look at them and I think, well, you're incredibly lucky. You really, really are. Because if I didn't cleanse and moisturise, my skin breaks out big time very quickly um, and I only have to have a lazy drunken night and think oh I can't be asked to take my makeup off I'm just going to use a baby wipe. Um, I have spots the next day, I break out the next day for sure like clockwork, no getting away with it. So for me it's never worth it, there might be the odd few out there that get away with it but Ultimately, if your skin is left unbalanced, you're not keeping it at its optimum health. So things like premature ageing are going to set in, whether you're aware of them or not. Later on in life, you'll be aware of them when it's too late to do anything about it. It really is the best idea to keep your skin as balanced. And when you're doing that, you're actually learning about your skin as well and what works for your skin and what doesn't. So what products are too rich or too light um, and whether using a flannel is too much friction for your skin and maybe dehydrates you or maybe using hot water when you cleanse is a little bit sensitizing so you need to use cooler water. You'll learn a lot of things about your skin along the way and the more you can learn about your skin the better because it basically arms you to get the best out of your products in the future. So when you want to use things like makeup you will know your skin and you'll be able to go and choose products with a better understanding of what's going to suit you. So when you know your skin type, all the products that you use on your skin have to have your skin, your skin type in consideration. So for example, my skin is combination and I tend to be um, oily down my T-zone and across the cheek here. And by about 2, 3 in the afternoon, I develop a slight shine. That is perfectly normal for a combination skin type. But when I change my products about, if I try something new, if I make mix things up a little bit, if I start to develop a shine earlier in the day, then I know that the products that I'm using are not suiting me because that is not normal for my skin. So you can actually use your use of products um, and your behaviour of your skin to work out, do a little bit of detective work and see what is going to suit you the best. When you've got your skincare well balanced and your skin is at its optimum and it's really happy, then your makeup has no excuse but to last you because the things that stop your makeup lasting is things like too much sweat and too much oil on the skin. So let's just imagine you've just finished your makeup, you're really, really happy with it. Everybody would love for their makeup to stay looking how it looks when you've just applied it all day. But the sort of things that cause your makeup not to last is mainly, predominantly, excessive oil and sebum production on the skin. So what they do is they secrete onto the skin from your pores um, and they come up under your makeup. So if you can imagine, there's almost like this layer, this slippery layer under your makeup, between your makeup and your skin, so then your makeup can slip and slide around like it's on an ice rink. And that is one of the main reasons that makeup doesn't last. 
And this is why I say, if your skincare is sorted, even the most basic routine, if you don't have a lot of time and you don't have loads of money to spare, don't go crazy, you don't need to buy expensive stuff. You just need to find what suits you and get your skin into a regular pattern. So when your skin is happy and balanced, it won't overproduce sweat and sebum in um, compensation to rebalance itself. So when your skin is happy and balanced, your makeup is naturally going to last longer. Other sorts of things that can cause your makeup to not last the day is, um, to a certain extent, the way you apply it. If you apply your makeup in a squiffy order, then you can't expect it to last. And I'll tell you what that is in a second. The other thing that might make your makeup not last is going to be if it really is just unsuited to your skin type. So say you're an oily skin type and you're buying a rich cream foundation. It's going to be too rich for your skin. It's not going to suit the fact that you're oily in the first place and it's just going to sit there. If you have an oily skin type, you want to go for something that's lighter. Um, so perhaps a liquid foundation or even a gel based foundation would be fantastic. Mineral powders are great for oily skin. Um, so when you have your skin type sorted and you're clear in your head about what makes your skin happy or unhappy, you need to choose makeup products to suit that. Um, so equally, if you're a dry skin, I would go for something that's going to feed your skin and add moisture to and nourish your skin. So in that situation, a cream foundation is going to be really good because it's going to add that extra moisture um, and balance the skin and help to balance it further. So if you choose products that really don't suit your skin, they are not going to last you the day. They are going to make your skin unhappy. It's going to do stuff that makes you unhappy and your makeup's not going to last. So going back to the application thing that I mentioned, um, when you apply your makeup, the main rule you need to follow is, how can I explain this? If you're using a foundation that is wet, so that would either be a cream, a liquid, a gel, a balm, a serum based foundation, any foundation that is wet as opposed to powder, that needs to go on first. If you put a wet product over the top of a powder based product, you are going to get caking. Okay, and that is going to be really difficult to blend and really difficult to undo without having to remove the whole lot and just start again. Um, so when it comes to wet products and powder products, the wet always has to go first and the powder sets it over the top. So for example, if you have a cream eyeshadow, but you also want to use an, a second eyeshadow that is powder based, do the cream one first and apply the powder one after because you will get the blending a lot better um, and you won't get the cakiness and you will set the cream in place with the powder and then it will last a lot better. So it's always wet based products first and powder after. You can't do it in reverse, you will get caking and you'll try and blend it and you'll end up just dislodging the powder based makeup that you did underneath and it will just look terrible and it just, it just doesn't happen, you just can't do it. So what I do with my makeup is I do all my skincare, blah blah blah, get out of the shower, get it all done. Um, the first thing I put on is my primer. If you use a primer it can also make your makeup last that bit longer. One, because it'll add extra nutrients to the skin to help balance it further so it won't feel like it needs to produce as much of an oily shine throughout the day, so it won't dislodge your makeup and it will just last longer. Um, and the second thing is because some primers can mattify the skin, they can blur things on the skin like fine lines and open pores um, and expression lines and things like that. So it can actually make your makeup glide on that bit easier. And the third thing they can do is they can actually smooth the surface of the skin. So for example, if you have a coarse textured skin or a skin that is quite dry and has um, maybe flaky patches or rough areas, 
Um, you can use a primer that will help smooth the surface of the skin so that when you put your foundation on it just glides on that much better. So you will actually find that your makeup lasts better because it's gone on better in the first place. So the first thing I do after skincare is I put my primer on um, and then I apply my foundation and then if I need it I'll use concealer. And then I will use a highlighter if I'm using a cream based highlighter. So an example of a cream based highlighter that I'm currently using is the Revlon Photo Ready Instafix highlighting stick. Now I picked this up recently, this is going to be in a beauty haul video that I do. Um, I won't swatch it because I'm actually going to cover this in a review, yeah okay I'll swatch it. It's just on the back of my hand. It's a really nice subtle champagne colour and um, it just goes on the skin beautifully and that's a cream based highlighter stick. This is a wet based product so I would need to do this before my powder set. But sometimes I use a powder based highlighter so in which case that can last until after my powder set. This is the Bourjois eyeshadow and this is in shade 08 beige rose and I use this as my highlighter at the moment. I had a little sort through my makeup case recently. It's so gorgeous. It's like a pearly champagne. I do really like champagne highlighters so I'm always on the lookout for them. But this is an eyeshadow and I use it as a highlighter. I am wearing it today. You can just see there's a little, a little glow of it on my cheeks today. So because that's powder based, that goes after my powder set. Okay, and I'm also wearing a powder based blush as well today. And that also went on after my powder set. I really hope I'm not confusing you here because this is so, so simple, so such a straightforward concept. I hope I'm explaining it well. Please let me know how you get on in the comments below with my tips because all of this is about how to make your makeup last longer. If you try something completely different to what I've recommended and it still works, then I'd love to hear about it as well. So please do let me know in the comments below. So I have covered skincare, which is the big one, the main factor that causes your makeup to not last. I've covered application, so how you apply your foundation and your products um, and the order that you put them on in and I've also covered the type of products that might suit your skin type. I really hope that's been helpful for you, I hope I have given you some tips and advice that are perhaps different to what you've tried before or have given you information that you weren't aware of before and would really help you with your skincare and your makeup. As I said earlier, I will link the blog post to my skincare advice um, in the description box below. Thank you for watching. I hope I've made sense. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and you'll get all my videos that I do in future. I have got tons of video ideas coming up. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you're all well and having a great week. Happy Tuesday and I'll see you next time.